Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about transport. We are going to be reviewing some of the key ideas we had from this unit. First off, what is the difference between facilitated diffusion and regular diffusion? With facilitated diffusion, large stuff, so this is going to be like the starch molecules um, that we had in the um, plasmolysis lab where basically you had the dialysis tubing with the starch inside and the iodine outside. Now the starch was too large so it couldn't leave the membrane. Now in real life if the starch wanted to get out of the cell it would need to be brought in and out of the cell through the cell membrane with the carrier protein. Basically these um, things are kind of in the middle of the cell. Um, they kind of look like pores with the uh, lipid bilayer. Um, certain big items need to pass through those. The easiest way I can put it is if you're playing the game Mario. Uh, Mario couldn't fit through certain things, but he could be transported in and out of really cool worlds by going through those green tubes. So um, he could go from the sky world to land back down to a dungeon and back and forth by those little tubes. So the starch to get back in and out of a cell would need to be um, carried through that by a carrier protein. So that is going to be these little things right here. Moving on, regular diffusion. This is basically going to be small stuff that can pass freely through the cell membrane um, with no problem. So an example that be that with the pass plasmolysis lab would be the iodine being able to sneak through um, the cell membrane which was the um, dialysis tubing and be able to get in and out freely with no problem. Now basically remember that it's going to be going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So the area of high concentration in our lab was basically on the outside where all the iodine was and it wanted to go down the hill so it went into the membrane. So that was inside of the dialysis tubing. Moving on, what is the main difference between diffusion and osmosis? Really, they are pretty much the same thing. Diffusion is when stuff goes back and forth in and out of the cell with no problems. So that's basically anything that's small enough to go in back and forth freely that the cell membrane will allow it will happen. So that's diffusion. Um, osmosis is basically going to be the same thing, but if you look, this is when water goes back and forth in and out of the cell with no problem. So diffusion, anything else, osmosis, simply water. And remember that's going to be going from high concentration to low concentration. What is bulk transport? Now, easiest way to think of bulk is when you want to buy in bulk. Um, so like if you were going to a wholesale club, Instead of buying like one pound of cheese and one pound of meat and you're trying to make tacos, you decide to buy a whole bunch of meat and a whole bunch of cheese. Or in a cell's case, you basically need proteins and sugars in order to survive. So you decide to go to Costco and buy 50 pounds of sugar and a whole cow. You are buying in bulk. Now what's the problem when you buy in bulk? Again, when you buy in bulk, you need to get it to somewhere, and you need to get there fast. Um, again, moving in and out of the cell in bulk is going to require some special processes. And that's where we're going to talk about our next thing. So bulk, when you buy in bulk, or when you're trying to get bulk stuff inside and outside of the cell, is going to call for two types of transport. first one will be endocytosis. Endocytosis is the movement of stuff into a cell membrane via member vesicles. So basically, looking at these things, the big bulky items, such as the protein or sugar, comes around, and the membrane basically makes a little thing around it, kind of like packs it in a baggie, and then it goes into the cell. Kind of quick piece of animation, but just to keep it simple, stuff comes in, it's packaged, it's sent into the cell. That's called endocytosis. The opposite is called exocytosis, so exiting, so exit or leaving the cell. Exocytosis is the movement of stuff out of the cell via the cell membrane. Can I'm going to be the big item here, which might be a protein of some type or sugar, is basically wrapped in package and sent out of its way through the cell. Um, special thing, you can watch a video on it if you want. Just to keep it simple here, we are just basically saying it's being wrapped like in a bag. Finally, different types.
types of endocytosis. Uh, there's uh, phagocytosis, uh, meaning the cell is eating. So basically when the cell is bringing in food that it needs to consume, that would be called phagocytosis. When the cell is drinking, that will be called phenocytosis, meaning the cell is drinking stuff. So basically you can do two different types of things the cell is trying to provide. If you have any questions, please ask. Hope this has been helpful with your review.